One of the most important properties to understand when building structurally efficient devices is density, or the mass per given volume. It is particularly important when dealing with balsa wood. For example, take a look at these two pieces of balsa. They are the exact same dimensions, same width, height, and thickness, but let's put them on the scale to see how different they really are. This one weighs 0.38 grams. And this one weighs 1.34 grams. That's over three and a half times as much. This is a fairly extreme example of density difference, but well within the range of balsa you might encounter. When the primary goal is structural efficiency and competition, every tenth of a gram matters. So it's important to eventually optimize the components of your device as accurately as possible. It's also very important to build the symmetric parts of your device with symmetric properties. For example, if your tower has four legs, they should all be exactly the same if possible. For most of the common range of densities of balsa, the strength in both tension and compression scale fairly linearly, so you can often guide your optimization using mass alone. For example, if you know the leg of your bridge weighed one gram and broke when it held 13 kilograms, you might want to try and increase the leg mass by 20% to 1.2 grams to try and achieve 15.6 kilograms. Of course, this is simplifying the problem a bit, but it's the basic approach to take when doing material optimizations on your design. This particular video is not about deciding what specific mass to use for a given design, but more of how you go about getting a reliable library of materials to use so you can even do a mass optimization on a given part. In the example I just mentioned, how would you get four legs of 1.2 grams to try in the first place? Balsa is typically sold in sheets of various sizes, usually using imperial units. My preference is buying the 4 inch wide by 36 inch long sheets. I tried the 48 inch long sheets, but found it was harder to cut consistently straight. But feel free to give those a try if you'd like. The 4 inch width was the best price performance, as the even wider sheets are much more expensive. I've had a lot of success buying balsa wood from a company based in Colorado called Specialized Balsa, but there are plenty of options available. Balsa sheets are available in a whole range of thicknesses, from 1 64th of an inch all the way up to 3 quarters of an inch. As you can see from my collection here, I have tried a lot of different varieties over the years. While every design is different and has different requirements, in general I can recommend having 1 32nd 1 20th and 1 16th of an inch thickness on hand for things like cross members and the thicker 3 30 seconds, 1 8th and 5 30 seconds on hand for primary structural pieces. I have never found a consistent use for pieces thicker than 5 30 seconds. If you are just starting out, I'd recommend getting some 1 16th and 1 8th inch thick sheets. A lot can be done with just those two sizes, although you'll eventually want more options once you're refining your design. Here's the tool you use to cut balsa sheets to any width desired. It's basically just an X-Acto blade attached to a screw. It's nice to have a caliper to measure the gap between the blade and the edge, but you can make use of anything of known thickness in a pinch. For example, if you wanted to make square sticks out of 1 16th inch thick balsa, you can just put the sheet in the gap and turn it until it's snug. One quick tip regarding the blade. I recommend using a pair of pliers and breaking off the very tip of the X-Acto blade before putting it in the tool. This has the effect of making the tip much more rigid and less prone to wandering when cutting. Make sure you have a good working area and are using a surface you don't care too much about. Put the edge up against the sheet and carefully run the tool along the entire edge. It takes a bit of practice, but it becomes easier over time. When cutting up an entire sheet, I often alternate cutting from both sides to minimize any issues from applying uneven side pressure. Okay, back to the problem of trying to create a library of material that is in the range of what we want to use. I'm going to make up some numbers that work well with what I'm trying to show. This same technique works no matter what part of the design you're trying to create material for. Let's say you have a bridge design where the four legs need to be 22 centimeters in length. I wouldn't recommend pre-cutting components to the exact length needed, but pick a normalized length that is slightly larger than what you need, but not too much larger. 
In this case, I'll use 23.5 centimeters. So the extra length allows for different build techniques and minor tweaking by the final builders. Let's assume our design was using 10 millimeter wide legs and we just observed a bridge with one gram legs fail at 13 kilograms. If we wanted to try and hold 15 kilograms, which is approximately 15% more than 13, we might want to try legs that are 15% heavier or 1.15 grams to see what happens. So how are we going to get exactly 1.15 gram legs? Well, I have all these 1 8 inch thick balsa sheets and it's easy enough to weigh them. Here they all are in order from lightest to heaviest. With some simple math, we should be able to pick out the correct sheet to use. The full sheet is 10.2 centimeters wide and 94 centimeters long for an area of 958.8 square centimeters. Our target size is one centimeter by 23.5 centimeters or just 23.5 square centimeters. Our target leg mass is 1.15 grams. So our target mass per square centimeter is 1.15 divided by 23.5 or 0.0489 grams per square centimeter. If we multiply that number by our, our entire sheet area, we get a target sheet mass of 46.92 grams. So all we need to do is pick the sheet closest to 46.92 grams and cut four legs that are one centimeter by 23.5 centimeters, right? Unfortunately, it's not nearly that easy. As it turns out, the density variation in a sheet of balsa can be pretty dramatic. Usually it's not too bad unless there are some real inconsistencies in the wood, but every single sheet will have some distribution of density. This sheet is 46.95 grams, and on average should get us very close to our target of 1.15 grams per leg. I'll cut up the entire sheet into 40 equal pieces and see what kind of distribution we get. The first task is to cut strips that are 10 millimeters wide. With our sheet being 102 millimeters wide, we'll wind up with 10 strips with 2 millimeters left over. The final cut when trying to trim off 2 millimeters is tricky, so slow down a bit and be careful. I'll speed up the video a bit here. Now that all the strips are cut, I need to cut them into 23.5 centimeter segments. I like to mark a single strip using a tape measure or a ruler and then use that as a reference to mark all the rest of the pieces. Next, I can chop them using a miter cutter. I highly recommend getting a tool like this for precisely cutting larger pieces instead of trying to use an X-Acto knife. Now I'll weigh every piece and record the mass on the stick itself using a fine point sharpie. Finally, I'll sort all 40 pieces by mass going from left to right.
As you can see, there is quite a big range. The lightest is 0.85 grams and the heaviest is 2.15 grams. From the same sheet of balsa, we got a stick that was two and a half times as heavy as another. This sheet produced a lot of sticks that were between 0.9 grams and 1.1 grams with some very heavy outliers as well. If we actually wanted to try 1.15 gram legs, we really only got two that would be extremely close at 1.14 and 1.15 grams. This demonstration really highlights the need for cutting up a lot of wood if you want to be able to select your material precisely. One thing to remember is to keep an eye on the relative humidity when you are doing this kind of sorting. For measurements done at the same time, it's fine as everything will be relative, but balsa can absorb quite a bit of moisture from the air and gain mass, so it's something to be aware of, especially if you're cutting up material in the summer and then again in the winter. In a future video, I'll talk about how to make sure humidity isn't a problem during competition, but for now it's enough to just be aware of the issue. I hope you have found this video helpful and have a bit more understanding of balsa density and how to approach creating a material library for building your devices. Thanks for watching and please feel free to leave any comments or questions below.